Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joint, Wednesday, the 22nd of September. I'm fucking excited today. For the last two years, I started working on the Many Saints in Newark in uh, March or April of 2019. And here we are, September 22nd of 2021. And the movie gets released tonight. I'm very fucking excited. What doesn't get released? Tonight's the premiere. The release is next Friday, October 1st. I cannot tell you how fucking relieved I am. I just want this to be over with. I want to watch the movie with the people I shot it with. Most importantly, with my wife. Uh, a few of my friends bought tickets. I, I, you know, I was against it, but... A few of my friends paid all the dough for tickets. Uh, they could have just waited and saw the movie for twelve fifty, you know. But they want to be around and hobnob with people, whatever. Uh, I'm excited. I thought about the work I put in to get this. This was a 23 year uh, journey for me, concluding with this movie. I took this movie and I was so proud of doing it that. I ended up moving to fucking Jersey. I was so proud. You know, I was very proud of me for what I had done, you know. Today's podcast, the guest is Samson Mokalikili. I don't know what his last name is. He's from fucking Samoa or he's Hawaiian, whatever. He's a great kid. You know, everybody always says to me, you know, Joey, thank you for doing what you do. You inspired us and stuff. And I never get the chance to return that favor, you know, to people, you know, like to say to you, believe it or not, you inspired me by putting that video up or whatever. When I first got the Many Saints in Newark, the first couple of days, you know, there's always a doubt. When you're on a project for the first couple of days, there's a doubt until you get into the rhythm. I had to get into David Chase's shooting style and into his mental psyche to understand what was going on. You know, when I and I wasn't struggling or anything to find it. I just went on the set and I didn't really know. You don't know. You know, uh, Mike said something to me today about he was thinking about putting a video up and he goes, I just didn't know. You know, you just don't know, you know, um, how to do things. So sometimes there's somebody there, you know, when you go to something like uh, you ever go have surgery or something, you go to the hospital and while you're sitting there, you're a little fucking scared. You, you're kind of like out of your comfort zone, but you start talking to somebody and that person tells you, like, I've done it before. It's fine. And all of a sudden you feel a lot better. That's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes there's always somebody there to ease your anxiety. When I first got on this film, I had I knew John Berntall, and I knew a couple of the guys, you know, lightly from different projects, but I didn't really know anybody, you know. I didn't know Alessandro, I didn't know Corey, and I didn't know Samson. And Samson was just a young kid. He was there to play Big Pussy, but his enthusiasm, his eyes, you know, his work ethic inspired me like I went back to the hotel room after like the second day I had worked with him and I'm like fuck I gotta pick up the pace a little bit you know what I'm saying these fucking kids are savages which is good it wasn't that I was doing bad at all or I didn't know what I was doing I just you, everybody needs that little push once in a while you know it's like when you open up a fucking jar that's stuck like the other day you got pickles or something and you try to fucking open it and it don't open and all of a sudden I go to like my grandmother and my grandmother's like <laughs> And she takes it right off. Sometimes you never know who could do that, you know. And, and like, you're like, Graham, you're strong. No, she just held it right or whatever. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I knew what I was doing, but I was kind of like out of it. It was the first two days, three days on the set. And just watching Samson, his enthusiasm was fucking contagious. And I could tell his enthusiasm was rolling over on other people, you know, because we were all talking in between scenes and stuff. And he was just a great kid. And the thing that made it more special was how young he was. Like, you want to go up to him and go, do you really want to fucking get into this shit right now? You know, you should be out chasing fucking skirts. But you know what? This is great. This is great. This is what you do. I wish I would have started acting at 21. I wish I would have started half the things I started at fucking 18 or 15, but I was too busy fucking snorting coke and, you know, jumping up and down and thinking I was cool. You know, now I'll know for the next time when I fucking make a comeback. I don't know. I'll probably come back as a fucking lizard or some shit and won't let me do the fucking opportunities I want to do. But it's funny, man, being an actor, like while I was talking to Samson on the interview, I was thinking about a story. I'm going to tell you guys how fucking fired up I was in 2003 like 
I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to succeed. It wasn't money. It wasn't that I wanted to hang out with boats with bitches and, you know, you know, girls gone wild. And that that's not what if you know anything about me, that's not who I am. I didn't want to go to a bar. I didn't want to, you know, I, that's not what I wanted. I just wanted to find a little bit of success with something. When I say success, I mean something that makes you happy, something that makes you proud. I've never been proud of anything in my life. I quit basketball. My mother died. I quit high school. I quit a Everything I started, I quit. This was the only thing I fucking stuck with. And I stuck with it because I loved it. And it was a way for me to contribute back to society, to let society know I was healed. I wasn't a piece of shit junkie anymore, and I wasn't a fucking thief. I wanted to succeed. I wanted to see my name on the fucking side of the credits. Again, it wasn't to, to be a millionaire or to you know, have a boat or to have a butler or to tell people what to do. That was never my intentions. It was just to succeed at something, just one fucking time, you know. So for me, Robert De Niro was my everything. You know, today he's a shell of what he was. But Robert De Niro was everything when I was coming up. You know, De Niro, Pacino. You know, before that, it was Steve McQueen. It was all those guys. So my first big break, honestly, was Robert De Niro's Analyze That. Again, it's not an Academy Award winner. Who gives a fuck? I pulled it off. That's all that matters. That I auditioned, I read, nobody gave me dick, and I did it. I did it. Nobody else. You know, that takes a certain type of pride. I never used to sit back and smell the fucking roses, but now I am. Now I'm seeing what Catherine Narducci said. You know, people change you. You you talk to different people and it heightens your intelligence sometimes. It heightens your way of thinking, you know. But I always had that sense that, you know, yeah, it's not an Academy Award winner, but it's a movie. You know how hard that is? You know how hard the process was for me to keep it together enough to go in there, focus, and fucking go in front of fucking somebody, not be nervous. That That's a lot of fucking steps. There's a lot of fucking moves. There's a lot of different pieces in auditioning. But you do it, and you fucking, uh, and this is what we do. But I, I still remember getting analyzed this. And my scene was with uh, Anthony Lampaglia, who was at the time was a great actor. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. I just saw him a few weeks ago. He must have gained like 80 pounds, like, uh, he looks like the guy from Gladiator. Have you seen the guy from Gladiator? Got a movie on fucking Netflix. Holy shit! He's been eating cheeseburgers for the last two fucking years. I mean, I'm no fucking physique, de la Mornal, but fuck. <laughs>